I have been a fan of actor, artist, icon, just all around amazing dancer, actor, just, just fabulous man named Russ Tamblin since I was oh, a little kid. And he has a new memoir called Dancing on the Edge, a journey of living, loving, and tumbling through Hollywood. And it's clear <laughs> that talent is in this family's genes because we are welcoming not just Russ Tamblin, but we're welcoming his daughter, Amber Tamblin, as well. Is it true you've been working on this book for 25 years? Yeah, I mean, you know, not, ste not steady, but right. uh, off and on. Sometimes yeah. I would go away from it, and then I would think of a, of a new story, or, or, and usually Bonnie would, my wife Bonnie would write it down and, uh, and say, oh, you've got to put that in the book. So I would change it. Uh -huh. And then I also, I had stories in the book that uh, Amber, <laughs> That Amber looked and said, "No, Dad, you can't say this. <laughs> no, you That's can't. What I was like, this cut is it. inappropriate. <laughs> you cannot that, talk slice women that, about, slice and dice. You know? <laughs> so, In case people are not familiar with, you know, Russ Tamblyn. Well, you're gonna, you're because, gonna start, I am going to tell you it. because because uh, I, I was a huge fan also. Yeah. Just like Whoopi, uh, and you started acting at the age of ten. And by 17, mm -hmm. you had a contract with MGM, and oh. you went on to star in some of the most iconic musicals ever. Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, a fabulous film. I never mm -hmm. wanted it to end when I watched it. <laughs> Father of the Bride, Peyton Place, fabulous. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And of course, and he earned a nomination, an yeah. Oscar nomination for that. And your biggest role was playing Riff in dun, dun, yes. dun, West yes. Side yes. Story. <laughs> and um, that was a good one. The interesting thing is that, Russ, you said that tumbling was your main skill and that, that that's what got you into these parts. You're tumbling. Tell us about well, that. Just, well, I used it in all, in all the films that I did. Mm -hmm. uh, if I did a Western, I was able to leap on the back of a horse. Hey, look at him. And, uh, wow. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah, you, you look at that. That was pretty... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, look at you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I gave him an edible before we got here. <laughs> <laughs> You're sorry, I interrupted you. You were able to leap on the back of a horse, fight scenes. Yeah, in else. comedies, I could take pratfalls and fights. Yeah. And uh, so I used it uh, really a lot. I found that acrobatics for an actor. Yeah, but you were a great dancer. You were a great dancer. Well, Look at you. Come on. <laughs> so it all, is all mixed tumbling. together. Yeah. It's all mixed yeah, together. Yeah, that's right. Well, and if, if you noticed, uh, I wasn't that, I mean, I never studied ballet or anything. Right. So uh, when I did West Side Story, uh, you'll notice that uh, Jerome Robbins gave me a lot of strutting to do. <laughs> <laughs> I just walked and everybody was dancing behind me and I was just uh, having a good time. <laughs> well, Russ, this book is full of behind the scenes stories from your life in Hollywood. Um, you've like going to school on set with Elizabeth Taylor, wow. driving around LA with Paul Newman in your trunk. <laughs> and of well, course, my favorite is teaching Elvis one of his most famous dance moves. What can you tell us about that? Um, <clears throat> well, I met him. He came to my uh, he came to my house one day with um, uh, Alex Romero. No, there was an an actor I forget who was. Doesn't matter. Good yeah. friends of his. It's all about Elvis. Anyway, <laughs> he brought he brought Elvis back, and and also his whole uh, gang. He always traveled with his all of his cousins, and hmm. so there were about twelve of them that, that uh -huh. pulled up in front of the. I had a little beach house. And uh, so I met him then, and uh, I also came to uh, visit Alex Romero, who was the choreographer of Jailhouse Rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so I went to see Alex and see how he was doing, and, and, um, uh, and saw Elvis again. And I hung out with him a lot. I went to movies with him, and he'd always, uh, the, the, car, the limos would pull up in front of the theater, and everybody would get out. <laughs> and form a line. Yeah, yeah I'm wow. sure. And, uh, Did you teach him those pelvic moves? <laughs> yeah. Tell him about that, about going in the green room. Yeah, that's what happened in the, uh, uh, the dressing. on the set is that, I was like, can I see it for a minute? Can you see what he's doing now? Yeah. yeah. And uh, well, He couldn't yeah. tumble, he could just, yeah. he couldn't really tumble. No, so but you were responsible for the pelvic moves? Uh, legs yeah. out. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, 
Basically, he, uh, let me jump Stay in here. Yeah. Oh, that, uh, what I, because this is one of my favorite stories yeah. from when I yeah. was a little girl, and there was a period of time where my dad was trying to teach me how to tumble and do backflips, and I was not good at those things. I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna be a poet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but dad, one of the things that's so amazing about that story is that Elvis came to the green room, or came, you, you know, you came backstage, and he was like, oh, Russ, you know, what do you think? Do you have any any advice? And tell them what your advice was to him. Well, it was mainly he 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 did it anyway. He did his legs, but I got him to snap them more and, uh, no. and basically. So uh, that's and that makes the move. move. Yeah. yeah, that move yeah. where he's yeah. really yeah. snapping yeah. them. Yeah. Snap it. Yeah. Wow. Snap it. Nice. Yeah, you can that see was him. Good. That was good uh, advice. Yeah. <laughs> right? It became a signature move. I mean, it was his well, signature move. It basically. did. Yeah. yeah. Sexy. Yeah. Trademark that. Um, now, Amber, you grew up hearing some of these stories from your yeah. dad. Yeah. Um, uh, but did reading this book give you a better understanding of who he is and his life experiences? Because you, you even had to kind of edit it, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, you know, it was such a huge process to, to, to craft the stories and put them together. Because as you said, Whoopi, it's just a joy that there's so so, so much. It's really a singular life and a kind of life that we don't see much anymore no. in the entertainment business yeah. where you have someone who's such a multi-hyphenate and all of the different things that, that they do. And so we worked with this incredible co-writer, Sarah Tomlinson, a brilliant writer, and we, it was sort of like a family endeavor between my mom, who's sitting here in the mm -hmm. front row. Yay! Who is so amazing. You know, and also just because we know that behind every great man is a greater woman. Yeah. Uh, or a partner. Yeah. And um, so for me, it was just a joy to be, to have it really feel like it was a family yeah. experience of also all sort of like saying, oh, remember this story you used to tell? Remember about, you know, living on Dennis Hopper's couch in Topanga Canyon and Neil Young when he was in the backseat of your car writing wow. this particular right. song? And he's like, so cool. oh, yeah. I do remember that. <laughs> it's like it's an easy life, man. Wow. Pretty cool. It's kind of extraordinary, but because you did something people think about doing, talk about doing, but you actually did it. At the height of your career, you made the decision to give it up to pursue not only your love of art, but you moved to Topanga Canyon in L.A., and you were at the forefront of a lot of the bohemian artist movement there. and and. You were always an artist, but you, you felt like it wasn't feeding you. The acting wasn't feeding you the exactly, way you wanted yeah. it to. Well, he, you can't get older and continue to tumble like that. No, no, but I, I, <laughs> I think he left a little earlier oh. than we're talking oh, about. Oh, really? <laughs> was it earlier? Yeah, I guess so. I was so. gonna say, yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it, it wasn't, you know, he, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, where were we? We were talking about your art. Yeah, you well, I, to I leave was, to to pursue that. I got into uh, fine art uh, as opposed to um, the performing arts. Yeah. Mm. And the, the, the difference, I always explained it as uh, in the performing arts, you do whatever you can to make the audience's head spin. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in fine art, you do whatever you can to make your own head spin. Wow. Oh. And, uh, wow. Very important. And it doesn't matter, I found, in... in uh, uh, in fine art, it doesn't really matter, at least it didn't to me and a lot of artists I knew, they just, uh, they, they don't need anybody to give them compliments, you know, about their art. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I always yeah. say, uh, w with a fine art, all you have to do is just look at it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. uh, see how it makes that's you feel. Yeah. Yeah. But in performing arts, a lot of actors and performers say, uh, are really interested in reading reviews and yeah. everything. But, yeah. but in fine art, uh, yeah, never you don't I, need it. Well, you know what? This was way too short. <laughs> <laughs> I waited 60 years for this. That's right. I waited 60 years. Completely. Yeah. I mean, I blame Russ Hamlet <laughs> for Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I blame yes. Russ Tamblin for Amber Tamblin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I be Whoopi Tamblin Goldberg? <laughs> All right. You're in the family. You're in it now. Love it. Listen, thank you both for coming. This is extraordinary and wonderful. The new book, Dancing on the Edge, is out today. And you know what, y'all? Yeah. You are, each and every one of you, getting a